Hello everyone, it's Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield here from Transport Evolved with another thought of the day. Happy Tuesday, I hope you've had a good day. Thank you very much to those of you who left comments to yesterday's video. I think perhaps I didn't make it clear. Um, I know that Elon Musk, when he was tweeting, was talking about people parking overnight and, and leaving their cars in a supercharger spot. And yes, that was the main concern. But I added to that with comments that there are businesses who are taking use um, taking advantage of Tesla superchargers. Uh, in fact, one of the one of the companies that's accused of leaving its cars parked at superchargers overnight is a company that uses a supercharger network to get from point A to point B. Um, there's also abuse in the UK from from companies who are overusing rapid charging network in general. So the the question yesterday was a wider one involving. Uh, not just supercharger access, but rapid charging in general. But what do I want to talk to you about today? Well, I want to talk to you about something that's on my mind a bit as we have another major winter storm uh, preparing to um, hammer the west coast of the US where I live. The previous storm that attacked us last week is now just about making its way to the Atlantic coast. It's left lots and lots of snow in its wake, lots of power cuts, lots of uh, very cold weather. Um, and even here in Portland, Oregon, we're down to get due to get down to about minus eight or minus nine degrees Celsius on Friday, which means potential for ice, which means potential for power cuts, which brings me to my question of today. As electric cars get more capable, their battery packs get bigger. We're seeing cars come to market that can store 40, 60, 100 kilowatt hours worth of electricity, which is enough to keep your average home running for maybe two, maybe three days, even if they're very intensive, heavy uses of, ener users of energy. If you consider a, an emergency situation where they're perhaps not using uh, washing machines or dishwashers and they're really cutting back on their energy, really trying to just use it for the basic things like cooking and maybe staying warm, the electricity in your average new electric car battery pack could keep a family going for much longer. I mean, in, in Japan, uh, Nissan has been working with disaster relief organizations and the local power utilities to develop the Leaf to Home setup, which does just that. It allows you to use the energy stores in your electric car's battery pack to power your home during a natural disaster, which for Japan generally means an earthquake or a tsunami. Now, over here, we don't have maybe quite as many nasty natural disasters. I mean, we do have the wildfires that we've had this summer in uh, more southern states. We do have extreme cold in certain parts of the US. And of course, I live in an earthquake zone, which is just as risk prone to major earthquakes as Japan. They're both on the ring of fire. So my question to you today is this, should electric cars be sold in the United States, in Europe, anywhere else in the world with a standard power takeoff that you can use to take your local power um, voltage and currency appropriate for your home to run your home off? Should that be offered as an option? It is in Japan already. Uh, various electric cars come with that option. But over here, we haven't seen it yet. Uh, which strikes me as kind of strange because I know lots of people who have electric cars who have gasoline or diesel powered generators to help them through um, bad weather. Can't we just use the energy stored in our electric car battery packs instead? Now, I know some of you are going to say, yes, but what about the Tesla Powerwall? What about the Tesla home energy storage systems? What about all those other um, solar power to battery pack solutions that you can now buy for your home? That's great. That's a really good solution. However, it's quite expensive to install. And if you rent a property like, like I do, it's not something you can do. It can only really be carried out if you happen to be a homeowner who has access to their own roof, who has permission to install things on the side of their home. So my question to you is this, could we make electric vehicle battery packs work more for us? Should electric vehicles come from the factory with some capability to run as an emergency power backup in the case of a natural disaster or some other power cut. If you think about the Toyota Mirai uh, fuel cell sedan, the Honda Clarity fuel cell sedan, they are both now coming out of the factory 
with Chademo DC quick charge sockets. Not to charge the car up, more to allow the car to act as a portable power station in the case of an emergency. Those are now standard fit items on these hydrogen vehicles, so why are they not on electric cars, and should they be? As always, leave your thoughts in the comments below, as well as a thumbs up and a share if you liked it, and if you didn't, give me a thumbs down and tell me why, because otherwise I can't get any better. Weather permitting, I will be back tomorrow, although it is looking like another snow day, which does impact my productivity slightly, so I will either be back tomorrow or later on in the week. Thanks for watching as always, and Peppa, would you like to play now? Do you want to go and find a toy? Go on, go find a toy. I can't reach a toy, go find one. So that's all that's left for me to say. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and my dog's not gonna give me the toy. Keep evolving.